All right, mates, how's it going? In today's video, we're doing chapter nine of Artists Rise of the Lich King. Let's make Artists fall to darkness even more depressing, shall we? Let's go. It was now about three years after Jaina and Arthas had ended things, and she was back at Dalaran, currently rushing through the gardens like a crazy person. She was running late for a meeting with Archmage Antonidas, and it wasn't the first time she'd kept him waiting recently, but as she ran through the garden, she couldn't help but feel a brief sense of sadness. Thanks to Arthas' two month long stay in the city, there weren't many places here that didn't remind her of him. Why the bloody hell had he chosen to break up with her just before the Winter Vale Ball anyway? His timing couldn't have been any worse, but she wasn't angry with him, not anymore. In fact, she'd come to understand his reasoning a little bit since. They both were indeed young, and they both had responsibilities and training to complete. At least they'd remain friends. They'd always be friends. Some other things had happened within the past few years as well. Mainly, a wizard named Kel'Thuzad had been dabbling in necromantic magic, and when the Kirintor found out, they were ever so slightly pissed off. They told him in no uncertain terms to cut the shit, and then Kel'Thuzad disappeared, and it was all very mysterious. Also, according to rumours and stuff, Thrall was now the warchief of a new horde, and they were attacking internment camps and freeing even more captive orcs. Dernhold itself had been raised to the ground by Thrall, who had called upon the ancient shamanistic magic of his people, and Lieutenant General Adolus Blackmore had died. But no one really cared about that. The thing was, although Jaina found the idea of a new horde slightly scary, she couldn't help but feel relieved that the internment camps were being destroyed. She'd never really liked them anyway. Some voices then interrupted that thought, one of which sounded pretty angry, causing Jaina to come to an abrupt halt. As I told Terranus, your people are prisoners in their own lands. Humanity is in peril. The tides of darkness have come again, and the whole world is on the brink of war. Oh, now I know who you are. You're that rumbling prophet I've heard so much about. I'm not interested in your nonsense. Jaina knew the second voice to be Antonidas, but she didn't recognize the angry one. And she also knew that the right thing to do would be to leave and not eavesdrop on this private conversation. But sod it, she was bloody curious. So she cloaked herself with invisibility and moved closer as quietly as she could. Be wise, Archmage. The end is near. Just calm down, you babbling fool. <sighs> then I've wasted my time here. Jaina was then startled to see the hooded stranger's form blur and shift and transform into a black bird, and then fly away. You can show yourself now, Jaina. Oh, balls. Of course he knew she was there. He's bloody Archmage Antonidas. I'm sorry, Master. Don't worry about it. It's that inquisitive nature of yours that I've come to rely on. That fool's convinced the world's gonna end, and he's been flying around ranting about it to most of the Alliance leaders. Taking the whole plague thing a bit far, in my opinion. Plague? You'll recall that I sent some messages to Capital City a short time ago. Yeah, I thought that was to do with the Orc situation. That was on the agenda, yeah, but my representatives thought that a more dire threat was at our doorstep. More dire than the Horde reforming. Orcs, dear Jaina, can be reasoned with. Disease? Not so much. There's reports of a plague spreading in the Northlands, something I think the Curing Tor should be paying close attention to. Jaina stared at him. What was he on about? Normally, disease was dealt with by priests, not magi. Unless you think it's magical in nature somehow. It's a strong possibility, and that is why I'm asking you to travel to these lands and investigate the matter. Me? You. You've learned nearly everything I have to teach, Jaina. It's time for you to use those skills outside the safety of these towers, and I've arranged for a special envoy to assist you. There was a weird twinkle in Antonidas' eyes as he said that last bit. What the bloody hell was he up to? Sometime later, Arthas was leaning against a tree, desperately trying to act calm and confident in front of his men. But, on the inside, he was shitting himself. Prince Arthas, we've been waiting here for hours. Are you sure this friend of yours is coming? I'm sure. She'll be here. No sooner had he said that, the group heard a distant bellow of the words Me smash! come from behind, and as Arthas quickly turned, he could make out a slender feminine figure racing towards them. And behind her, some kind of water elemental thing. And behind that, two ogres. By the light! Sir, your orders? Arthas instinctively wanted to yell charge, but he then caught a glimpse of Jaina's face. She was grinning. Stay your blade, Falric. She can handle herself. And she could indeed handle herself! Jaina quickly span round and shot fire at the ogres pursuing her. One of them decided he no longer wanted to smash and cheesed it, but the other one kept coming. So she sent another blast of flame at it and it burned to death, screaming the entire time. It was actually kind of nasty. Gentlemen, meet Miss Jaina Proudmore, special agent to the Kirin Tor and one of the most talented sorceresses in the land. Looks like you haven't lost your touch. It's good to see you again. You too. It's been a while since the prince escorted me anywhere. Yes, it has. Unfortunately, the rueful tone of Arthas' voice immediately made this touching moment a bit awkward. Right, um, let's, uh, let's get down to business, shall we? Okay, what do you know about this plague? Not much. Father's only just sent me to work with you. 
Me and Uther have been fighting orcs, mostly. But I'm guessing if the Dalaran wizards want to know more about it, it's got something to do with magic, right? Yes, although we're not sure how yet. Antonidas sent me to observe and then report back. We should check out the villages along the King's Road, talk to the inhabitants. Hopefully they know something and aren't infected. Who knows? Maybe this is nothing more serious than a localised outbreak. Arthas could hear the doubt in Jaina's voice, and he understood it. If Antonidas didn't already think this plague was quite serious, he wouldn't have sent Jaina to investigate it. Nor would King Terranus have sent his son. I wonder if it has anything to do with the orcs. I'm sure you've heard about the escapes. Yep. Do you remember that little family we saw? I can't help but wonder if they got out. Well, if they did, they might be worshipping demons again now. What? I thought the orcs were no longer using demonic energy. I don't know. Father sent Uther and me to help defend Stranbrad. But by the time we got there, orcs had already begun kidnapping people. And when we hunted them down, three men had been sacrificed. Hmm. Maybe there is a connection. It's disheartening to think they've reverted back to that. Maybe it's just a single clan. Maybe. Maybe not. We can't afford to take risks. If we're attacked, my men have orders to kill them all. Now, there was a reason for Arthas' sort of callousness towards orcs, and it was mostly due to the fact that he'd been at war with them for the past few years. The prince began to think back to a particular low point during their campaign. Uther had sent two men with an offer of surrender to Thrall, and the response they received back from that offer were two riderless horses, and that had made Arthas ever so slightly furious. Let's get in there and destroy the beasts. Remember, Arthas, vengeance cannot be a part of what we must do. We are paladins, not some kind of elven edgy boy class that doesn't exist yet. Arthas could see the wisdom in Uther's words, but he still felt like he'd failed the men that had been on those horses. But a gentle hand on his arm called Arthas back to the present, and Arthas, out of old habit, placed his hand over Janus. She started to pull away, but then gave him a slightly strained smile. It's really great to see you again, Jaina. You too, your highness. You too. After travelling for a while, the group made camp before dusk in a small clearing close to the road. They then shared a meal and some wine by the fire and it was great. Real morale boosting. Made it feel like they were all comrades enjoying the evening rather than a battle-ready unit investigating a deadly plague. Afterwards, Jaina sat a little bit away from the group, so Arthas walked up to offer her more wine, and then sat down next to her and looked up to the stars. What do you think we're going to find? Not sure. I'm intrigued by what you said about the demons, though. Yeah, maybe we should have invited a priest along with us. Well, you're a paladin, Arthas. The light works through you. Plus you swing a weapon better than any priest I've ever seen. Arthas smirked at that. Was she talking about his penis? But as he reached a hand out towards Jaina, she sighed and got to her feet. It's late. I don't know about you, but I'm exhausted. I'll see you in the morning. Well, he definitely misread that. She wasn't talking about his penis at all. Arthas head over to his own tent and tried to get some sleep, but couldn't. He just tossed and turned in his bedroll. Until finally, the impulsive part of him decided he needed to do something. Jaina, wake up. Arthas, is something wrong? You up for a little adventure? What sort of adventure? Trust me, I always have, Arthas. This time, instead of sneaking off to look at orcs and stuff, the two just had a chat instead. Which isn't really that much of an adventure, but what if? Jaina, I think there was a reason we were brought together again. Well, yeah, your father sent you because... No, more than that. What are you saying, Arthas? When this is all over, maybe we could talk about what ended at Wintervale. No, not about endings, about beginnings. Things have felt incomplete, empty, without you. You know me like no one else does, Jaina, and I've missed that. Jaina was silent for a little bit, but then sighed, and the two kissed for the first time in too long. Relief washed over Arthas. Breaking things off with Jaina had been the biggest mistake he'd ever made. There were still some doubts in his mind about commitment and stuff, but he now knew that he wanted to spend the rest of his life with Jaina Proudmoore and have millions of blonde babies with her. The two then fell asleep together. No sexy business, just a bit of light spooning. And Arthas returned to his own bedroll before dawn, just so his men didn't get the wrong idea. And as he lay down in his own tent, he thought to himself, no demon, no mystery, no plague could ever stand in the way of Prince Arthas Menethil and Lady Jaina Proudmoore. And we're leaving it there! That's possibly one of the saddest moments for me. The fact that they would have ended up together once the investigation was finished. That really sucks. In the next chapter, Undead. That's pretty much all I need to say, really, isn't it? As usual, link in the description if you're interested in buying this book. Also, there's links to my Discord server and my Patreon page too. If you enjoyed this video, like, subscribe, all of that bollocks. And all that's left to say is, thanks for watching, and see ya!